you she gets here. She looks great, like our sister from Taita. Don't you think so? Yes. Praise the Lord. These are our sisters from the other mothers across. We have got sisters across. We are blessed and highly favored. And we want you to know we were so blessed during the revival meetings. And we pray that God will continually filling you. That you may keep on bringing and bringing and bringing. Because it is in the giving you keep on receiving. Praise the Lord. And together we want to pray for her. And I want you to believe that you will connect with the spirit of the prophet this morning. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we stand in your presence this morning. We thank you that you knew about us and you have brought us a speaker many miles away. And we know there is a word for each one of us. We speak divine connection that each one of us will be able to partake that which you have set aside. You know our needs, O oh God. We therefore lift her to you and we pray as she continue receiving from you, we will continue receiving. We bless you because we know you are going to speak to our hearts this morning. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Truly the Lord is in this place this morning. There's a sweet spirit that's in this place. And as um, Mother Kameni has already said and how she has um, reflected briefly on the last two days of the revival that we had this week, God has showed up in a way that is truly uncommon. I will have to say that since the last two days, God has opened a door that only he could have opened. And one thing about God, God says that if you trust him, that he'll give you the keys to the kingdom. And this morning, we stand together in agreement to receive the keys from the throne room of God, that we will be able to celebrate the victory that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And as we also have already prayed the prayer of provision and blessing to be upon this house, upon the leaders, Bishop Kamani and Pastor Kamani and all those associates that work so diligently with her. We pray that each one that is in this room will just lift your hands just for a brief moment, just to just lift them up before the Lord and just pray the blessings to be upon them. Can we just raise our hand for one minute? Father, we just pray in advance, oh God, what you are doing in this hour. We thank you for the releasing of your stewards that you have placed over this house. We thank you for the provision that you have already provided them, Lord God. And Lord, now only thing we do is stand in the posture of prayer to give you thanks and to thank you for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you're deciding to do on tomorrow. Lord God, and even right now, we call favor upon them in every part of their life, their health, Lord, the ministry, the work, their finances, we call it blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your scripture this morning, we're going to get straight into the word. Hallelujah. Briefly, I want to take a moment to um, share with you um, before we get into the message. Today's topic is living in expectation. Someone say living in expectation. The last two nights, the Lord has graced us with five key points that will help us to align with moving in that greater expectation. Not only moving there, but living there. That means that it's a functioning place that we will reside. It's not something we will just experience, but it will be something that we shall live in. And for the fast, last two nights during the revival, there were five points that he had released to us. The first one was promise, promise. The scripture that goes with promise that I will give you today is Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 29. And it says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Someone say promise. promise. 
The next P he gave us was provision. Provision. The scripture that I will give you today is out of Philippians 4.19. And the word of God declares, And my God will supply all of my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus' provision. The next point is process. We will find a key verse, a passage in Job. 23 and 10, where we know the story of Job, where he went through a lot of trials and tribulations, and he experienced all types of hardship. He was actually, you know, betrayed by his, his friends. His family died. He lost everything he had. But something in that process God allowed Job to know is that he would give him back what he had lost. Job stayed faithful in the process. The word there says, yet he knows the way I take. When he has tested me, I will come out as pure gold. So when we have gone through the fire, know that number one, his promise, his provision will carry us through the process. And when I come out, I will be as pure gold. The next point was plan. According to the scripture in Jeremiah 29 and 11, the word of God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He knows the plan that he has for you even in your process, he is purifying and sanctifying us to be able first to come out as a vessel of honor and of good report to bring us to our expected end. The last point is purpose. Purpose. What is the purpose, O oh Lord? When I have been tried in the fire, I have lost everything that I possibly believe I can lose. But yet you define in your word that even in the darkness, you show up in light. The word of God says in Romans 8 and 28, for, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord to them that are called according to his purpose. This morning, God has given us those five principles that will be our fruit that will help us to bring and to live in a place of expectation. Regardless of what place you are in, if you're still seeking him to teach you how to rely on his promises, if, he, if you're still in a place to where you're you're asking him to teach you how to have faith to believe that he's giving you the ability to rely on his provision. Or if you're in that place that you're still in the process of being tossed to and fro, ask God to give you the faith to help you to get through the process that you can begin to see your expected end. One thing about God, we know for sure that if we would give him what he desires, he will give us what we need. The last point in the last day of the revival, we said, Lord, how can we get through these five keys or these five principles that at times, even from when we first became a Christian, all the way to we've been in the way for a long time, it seems at times that we may have been stuck in, in believing in the promise. We've been stuck in the place of believing in the provision. We've been stuck in the place of the process. We even got a glimpse of what the next place in God looked like, but we got stuck in the process. God said that the process is the place that we'll be able to be that's going to allow us to be carried in. The second day of the revival, the God said that the place that we have to remain and live in in order to get to a place of living in expectation is when you're in the process to live in praise. The word of God came forth on the second night of the revival and the word was Judah come forth. Judah come forth. That means that when you have experienced and you have spent out 
out everything that you can in your natural to understand or to embrace your experience of your life. God said that if you have the Holy Spirit that lives in you, that gives you power to overcome, he says begin to sin Judah first by giving him a praise and watch the process become accelerated. That means that he's going to move you through the process a little bit quicker to get to the plan and the purpose that you have for this time in the kingdom to bring your expected in. But not only bring the expected in, but live in the expected in. Today God is saying that if you would realize that these keys that he's given all the way from Genesis until now, he says that if we would take a hold of these five principles and then line ourselves up to become a vehicle of praise, that everything that we're expecting God for will manifest. Amen. The word of God said here also in that praise, Psalm 34, it says that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It don't matter if you are in the first step of the promise. Lord, I don't even understand. I don't even know how to anticipate you to come. But Lord, if I can praise you in faith, even in this place of pursuing my promises that you've given me in you, Lord, I believe that I will be able to bless you. I will be able to give you honor. I'll be able to give you glory even as I cross through your promises. This is a work in progress. How many say we're a work in progress? We are on the potter's wheel that God is yet making a vessel of honor and good report to be a witness in the earth in this hour to show exploits in the kingdom that people that who do not know God will see the God in you and cry out what must I do to be saved that's the hour in is when souls that are are plagued with disease and those that are plagued with demons will begin to see the God in you and begin to say what is who is this God that lives in you that can give life and life more abundantly? One thing about God, God says that if you would rest today in this hour in the posture of praise, you will be able to be a vehicle that he can use to cross over into that place which is called expectancy. Someone say expectancy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The example that we're going to give you today is going to come out of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, 1 through 18. We're going to briefly talk about, remember the five keys, keep them fresh in your mind. And then remember that praise is the vehicle, but it also produces the oil. Amen. Let us go to Genesis 22, 1 through 18. And the word of God says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, he said, behold, here am I. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and caved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God has told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide, stay here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand 
and a knife, and they were, went both them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire of the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both them together. And they came to the place where God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called upon him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon thy lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, myself have I sworn thy said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars are of the heavens and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of the enemies. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we're talking about living in expectation. No longer talking about it. No longer defining it. But literally being the provision, the plan, the promise, the process, and the purpose of God manifesting in the earth to be the expectation that God needs to be revealed in this hour. God today is saying just as when he spoke to Abraham, he says, Abraham, you have been one that I have called with a holy call. You've been called by my name. And you've asked me to give you something that you almost believed based on your natural ability that I wasn't going to do. You were old. Your wife was old. You had nothing naturally that would declare that you had an ability to produce a seed. But how many of us know that when you look into your life and when you begin to inspect what you've come through, that there's no way on this natural earth that I could even imagine God seeing me fit to be able to be a vessel to work great exploits. When I begin to reflect on the things that I may have come through, I may not believe that I have the right stuff to be able to be a vessel of honor that can preach or teach or call forth miracles or wonders in the earth. I may not feel like I'm worthy to be used in the kingdom for this hour to prove that his purpose, his alignment, his exploits that will be worked in the kingdom can be worked through me, through the power of God that works in me, that gives me the power. I'm here to tell you today that if you raise up a bar of faith in God to believe that your greater shall be better than your former, God said that he will begin to give you your expected end, not tomorrow, but right now today because you trust him that he will provide a lamb or a 
sacrifice in the bush to be able to become your burnt offering. Today, we may feel like we don't have the capacity. You may feel like that you don't even know how to read the Bible. You can't, you can't quote the Bible. You can't bring it to your remembrance the way that you want. But God said that if you would come as a little child and begin to say, Lord, I will be what you want me to be. I will speak what you want me to be. I will talk what you want me to be. God said that he honors you calling forth those things that be not as though they were because when you begin to speak them it becomes to activate something in the earth that will transcend what your natural has produced and the spiritual will connect with the natural and cause an explosion of something different to happen in your life today we got to get to a place that we live in expectation I don't have enough money in my pocket to do what God told me to do but I got favor that transcends any job I'll ever work I got favor that transcends the education and the knowledge that I've learned in school when you look at what we've learned but look at what God is God says that I will put my super on top of your natural and cause you to do exploits that the kingdom of God will be able to be seen in the earth that people will begin to cry out who is this God that you serve today is through our posture of praying that God will reveal what we need to have in order to build the capacity of seeing what expectation looks like expectation will not come because we look for it expectation will come because we know that we have it that is stored up in the spirit that we got to begin to become a well that will spring up out of you that God will begin to water the earth with the praises that will transcend everything that you're going through somebody got to know today that we're seeking to walk in expectation I don't want to define it I don't want to just quote the scripture I don't want to just think about it I want to see the manifestation of my expected end my expected end says that I'm blessed when I come in I'm blessed when I go out my storehouse is filled I shall be a lender and not a borrower I don't have more than enough for the work of the ministry we will not walk in lack but we will walk in provision when you begin to celebrate God in the process of your not enough God will begin to pour in the supernatural giftedness and instruments to begin to see what he's trying to do in you in the earth God says lift up a praise that will begin to produce that's the new word today produce today the word is produce become producing agents that when you begin to walk over cross into a place that you never been Abraham crossed into a place he asked God for a son he says Lord I've waited with expectation I even made mistakes I went and laid with my handmaiden I didn't trust you enough and I went in my own understanding and I made a mistake but God yet found him faithful he says you know what it doesn't matter if you fall he says get up and keep moving it doesn't matter if you fall don't fall backwards fall forward don't fall backwards fall forward when you fall forward you are pressing in to the provision of God because see the enemy he wants to keep us in a place of paralyzation and when we get in a place of paralyzation it produces fear and when fear grips you you take on a certain mindset the mindset we take on I'm gonna give you three different mindsets three different mindsets the first one is a barbarian mindset barbarian B-A-R B-A-R I 
B-A-N, a barbarian. B-A-R, B-A-R, I-A-N, a barbarian mindset. Keep your focus on Abraham. But now let's look how he went through each point that I just talked about. This barbarian mindset is defined by a mindset that is driven and favored by Satan. This mindset grips you in fear and hold you in a place of logic and reasoning to where you become paralyzed in your own thinking that you can figure it out. But when you do not see a result, you become betwixt. You get stuck. You think that your prayers have been defeated. But God's saying that the place of this mindset, the enemy holds you there to keep you with the fear of failing. It holds you in bondage to tell you, I told you so. I told you you couldn't do it. I told you you couldn't make it. I told you you couldn't speak. I told you you couldn't remember. And he haunts you in that place and keeps you locked in a place of prison. But the word of God says, this mindset does not have no power over God. The word says, according to 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That means that when your world becomes turned upside down and you don't know what to do and you feel paralyzed and trapped in your own thinking, God is saying today, if you have on that mindset, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to give him glory. Begin to believe him for your expectant end. Begin to call forth those things that be not as though they were. Don't no longer think about yesterday, but think about what he says. He holds the future and what he said that he will complete. So when we begin to get in the posture of producing, God says that praise has to be your oil that's going to get you there. It won't be enough just to quote the scripture we've remembered. And it doesn't become a part of a heart matter. Abraham initially got stuck in his own thinking, his logic. He said, well, I'm old. I can't bring forth. I don't think I can do this. He became vulnerable in the process. He became susceptible to the attack in the process. He no longer could see the expected end. Because he became paralyzed in the process. But how many of us know that God is a God of a second chance? He's a God not only of a second, a God of a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh and an eighth. He's a God that cannot lie. And he said that if he said it, he will perform it. And today we are going to put on the mind set of God. The next mindset is a Greek mindset. Greek. A Greek mindset. A Greek mindset. A Greek mindset defines, is defined by believing we have power within ourselves. The Grecians, they thought, because they were so smart, they had it all going on. They had all the things that would produce naturally. 
They had power. They had authority. They thought by their own intellect and their ability that they didn't need anything else but who they worshipped, all their gods. But the Greek mindset is driven by the mindset of pride. And it filters through humanistic intelligence. Pride is a dangerous place. Pride will make you think that I can do it all by myself. But God said that's why he put us together in one body with many members. Tell somebody I need you and you need me. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, I need you. And you need me. Hallelujah. We cannot make it in this world or in this kingdom work without each other. Because we're seeking to reach the same expected end. God is saying to us today, when you see your brother or your sister struggling in the process, begin to allow your faith to connect with their faith. Don't ask, well, what's wrong? Don't, don't try to be inquired. Don't try to figure it out. But press in the posture of prayer and praise and become a producing agent that will change the position of whatever situation your, your brother or your sister is going through. This is where we're going to accelerate the kingdom manifestation by looking within ourselves and asking God, God, what are you seeking to do with me in this place A process? If we get stuck in the Greek mindset, the Greek mindset will say, get it for yourself. The Greek mindset says, oh, I already done went to seminary. I already got a, the degrees. I got doctor in front of my name. I got this in back of my name. I got all these things. I don't have time to pray with you. The Greek mindset says, get it the best way you can. The Greek mindset says that, well, I can't help you help yourself. That's a Greek mindset. That mindset does not have power to rule in the kingdom. We that have the power... We have to annihilate the mindset of a Greek mentality that says that, well, it's me and I and that's it. We have to know that together we will be able to conquer more together than we ever will alone. Because God said if he's on our side, we have the majority. And if all of us today know Jesus, that is our common denominator. Hallelujah. No longer will we begin to look to the left nor the right to determine where we build our capacity. But we will look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help cometh from heaven and earth. And today, when you start looking vertically unto God, everything about your process will begin to shift. And you'll begin to praise God even where you're at. And guess what happens? You will become contagious. People will become contagious of the power of God that's resting on you. And it'll produce a dominating effect. How many wants to see the Shekinah glory fall in this place that will cause even time to hold still so God can praise up in here? How many wants to see a manifestation when somebody sick can get healed right now? Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. Hallelujah. Sometimes when people in the audience may, we may not know or see everybody because sometimes it gets many. But God said that if we take time to get in the unity of prayer and praise, that you will be revealed by him what we need to be doing right now in this place. The reason why we are, have been in the past struggling is that because we have not realized truly what God has given to us. Do you know why? 
the Greek mindset. The Greek mindset. I don't want to tell nobody that I'm going through. I don't want to tell nobody that I don't have enough. I don't want to feel inadequate. I don't want to even expose the fact that I walk in fear or inferiority. I don't want to even tell nobody that I'm angry or resentful or hateful or stinking and don't want to know how to talk about it. I don't want to share those things. But God said that when you would just make yourself as an open book and become transparent and say, God, I need you to fill me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet and deliver me from my own insanity. I need relief. I need deliverance that I may become a producing agent in the earth. Producing agents, the only charge they have is to pour out. They pour out. When you begin to pour out the issue, don't you know the same time you pour your issue out in love and truth and dependence on God, it produces oil? It produces the sufficiency. It produces the capacity. When you're weak, God has positioned someone to become your strength. When you're down and out, he has already positioned someone to walk down your path to speak a word of encouragement. How many have experienced that? How many have gone through a place to where you were so tired of being sick and tired that even sometimes you felt like giving up? But you were embarrassed to say that. But God sends somebody to rub you on your back and say, you can make it. Hallelujah. You can make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Greek mindset, the mindset of pride, we have to tear it down. The third mindset that we want to learn to embrace is a Hebraic mindset the hebrew hebraic h-e-b r-i-a-c hebraic mindset the hebraic mindset it positions us and it causes us to walk in a place of transference in this mindset of having the mind of christ you walk as an empty vessel, continuously receiving a download of influence from the throne of grace. The Hebraic mindset says, I walk in the principle of trusting God. Think about it. Trusting God in the process at times can be quite difficult. But if we really remember that he already has given us the promise, the provision, the process, the plan, and the purpose, he's able to carry us through the biggest part, which is our process. The only thing he said to use your body as this temple as a sacrifice and begin to praise him. When you, the next time you experience a problem or you feel paralyzed, I dare you to start praising. I dare you to start giving God the glory. I tell you what, you praise until something happens. You praise until your mindset shifts. You praise until you believe God that he's going to do what you ask him to do. You begin to praise him even when you don't feel like it. And watch God strengthen you. The word says, according to Romans 12 and 2, and do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable will of God. Today, in walking in and crossing in to the uncommon harvest, it is not anything we really got to do that's so big, but trust God. Now, if I take my faith and connect it to your faith and your faith, in your faith, that makes a lot of faith, doesn't it? The 
connectedness of a body brings life. The connectedness of a body will produce life. Any living organism that has to have life, it has to be connected to the bloodline. And not just physically, but spiritually, we in the kingdom of God have to be connected with the same bloodline. That will cause us to agree on he in heaven, even as it is on earth, that we are seeking the same thing. Amen? So today, when we begin to look at what we are relying on, we know for a surety that we have the power of his spirit that lives, rules, and abides in us. That gives us the ability to begin to speak the same thing that God has already given to us. Now, the only thing that we have to do is use the common denominator of praise. In order for us to reveal and know that this is the time of expectation, some of us in this room may not be there yet. That's where we have to put on the mind of Christ. And today, before we leave here, we're going to begin to pray a prayer that will help us to gather together with the spirit of oneness, a spirit of connectedness, no longer looking for what I need for me, but what does my brother or my sister that sits next to me that maybe I don't even know by name, I've never actually even seen them, but I want to touch with heaven and agree with heaven for whatever their need is, that it will be supplied. And by me praying for their need to be met, I believe that God will meet our need. Amen? Hallelujah. In that expected place, God's saying that we were going to teach each other how to come as one. Take off our differences and put on everything that connects us. And that's the power of God. Because those three mindsets will cause us to stay in the process versus becoming producing agents. And Many of us may say, well, I don't get that or I don't understand. It's okay. What is okay is to know if you have Jesus Christ, the living one that lives in you, he's giving you power to do all things but fail. You don't have to know the in-between. You don't have to know what even tomorrow holds. He said he holds the future. So maybe someone in this room may be a little bit farther than us in your place of positioning with God. You have a little bit more faith. You have a little bit more unction to praise. You have a little bit more time in the word. You have all those attributes, but somebody next to you doesn't. Today, we're going to take the time to become producing agents. And as we become producing agents, we're going to become praise and worship offerings unto God that as we walk in this time of expectation we will know see speak walk and declare that the expected time is now your release is now your harvest is now your increase is now your occupation and job is now it's not next week. It's now. My capacity is now. My determination is now. My provision is now. Hallelujah. Start emptying your purses. Start emptying out your purses. You know what I mean? That means start taking out stuff you don't need. That you can put what you need in there. How many of us need some resource? We need resource. That means we have to begin to empty stuff out that he can put in. I'm not going to carry no longer all my credit cards in my purse. I'm taking them out and leaving them at home. You know why? I don't want to rely on the system of this world. I'm choosing to rely that God said that he would supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. And so today when the credit card says decline, God says it's approved because he has given me the keys to the kingdom to ask and the door 
shall be opened. And today I walk in provision. Not because we did anything great, but because we trusted God. Amen? Amen. So do something uncommon. Take out credit cards. Take out what you've been relied on. Take it out and watch God begin to reverse your situation. We watch God. I told somebody at our church, and I'm finished, I'm over in three minutes. I told someone in my church, I said, you know what? Y'all have these little baskets. That's about yay big. I said, what you present is what your measure of anticipation is you get you a big old large container and whether or not it got one thing in it that's a seed God will increase your seed so what am I saying today people of God we must shift out of the mindset that thinks we know what's going on the barbaric walking in fear walking in disparity we got to put it away allow it to become a burnt offering then we got to shift out of the mindset of a Greek set that tells us well I got the power I know everything we got to throw that and become a burnt offering then we have to put on the mindset of trusting God today if you are willing and believing God that you are not getting ready to, but you are declaring with the spirit of connectedness in this whole body, this one organism that's going to function as one. And regardless of which side of the place it blows, the north, the south, the east, or the west, God said he's already given you the capacity and the provision and the know-how to get wealth. He's already given it to you. He's given it to us. So we have to rely on each other. Amen. Let us stand today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The final scripture that I'm going to give to you is 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. And it says, but as it is written, eyes have not seen, neither ears have heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for them that love them. I said, we haven't even seen it in this natural place yet. We haven't heard it. We haven't anticipated in the magnitude that God wants us to experience and he's saying that if you allow your faith to connect with your brother or your sister, connect with the visionaries of this house, God said that he will yield you a fountain that will flow as a stream that will never dry up. And wherever you may be drying, wherever you may feel not with the capacity, God says let your oil become praise and God will reveal in due season what it is that he's birthing in you to be part of this expected end don't think that what you have is not enough he says all you need is the faith of a grain of a mustard seed he says if you get that just that much faith God says that you can move a mountain Today, look at that mustard seed faith as the provision of God that will take that 1% and be attached to the 99% of God and build the 100%. The capacity complete the work and destiny that he has given unto you in this hour. Today, we're calling forth into this body. I'm believing before the next time we come here, that the cathedral will not only be built but the people, the souls that have heard the cry that has been spoken and declared in the wilderness that sons and daughters will be multiplied in the kingdom
kingdom and great exploits. People that are sick, poor, and diseased will come in crying. What must they do to be saved? I'm believing that. It won't be the same as yesterday. It won't be that we come in looking. We'll come in believing. I'm believing that right now. Let's just lift our hands for a moment and just thank him. Begin to praise and worship him for the increase in this next season, which is now. It's not tomorrow. It's right now. Lord, we lift our hands in the sanctuary to believe by faith right now that you are downloading me with more than enough for the work of the ministry. Lord, we thank you for decreasing me and increasing yourself into my life. I thank you, Lord, that every crease is being ironed out. Every place of emptiness is being filled. I thank you that you are taking off the mindset of the barbarian. You're taking off the mindset of the Greek. You're putting on the mindset of you, oh Father, that I may be a vessel in the earth that will be a living organism that will touch heaven and heaven will touch me. No longer, oh God, do I want to walk in religion, but I want to walk in relationship. No longer do I want to quote the scripture. I want to be a living example of your word being manifested in the earth. Lord God, shake me. Use me, Father, for the kingdom power work that you've declared right now on our lives. Right now, we cancel every assignment of the enemy right now that has locked you in bondage, paralyzed you in the problem or your circumstance. And today, we call forth to come praise that will deliver you, that will reach heaven, and you will be free from every yoke of bondage. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, we honor you for it. Lord, we anticipate not tomorrow, but right now. Lord, I decree right now, right now. Lord God, even right now, as you're birthing right now. Lord, I, I'm going to carry this thing this time to full term. I'm not going to abort it. I'm not going to miscarriage. I shall to bring. Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. We honor you. We are the expected time. Hallelujah. And we'll stay in this posture of only vertical alignment. You and me, oh Lord. You and me. I lay at your feet.